Welcome to sixth week's first lecture. In this week, we are going to talk about risky assets. In, last, uh, in the last week, we talked about uncertainty, uh, primarily because we could, uh, then we would be able to talk about assets and pricing of assets under uncertainty. So assets whose values uh, vary a lot are called uh, risky assets. It's not only that the values vary a lot, uh, you do not know them uh, beforehand, and so there is uncertainty associated with it. So in order to figure out uh, the prices of such assets uh, and the choice under uncertainty about these assets, uh, we need to use uh, a few statistical concepts. Because price of a risky asset varies a lot, uh, we will think about price as being uh, price of an asset as being a random variable. So, what is a random variable? A random variable W, uh, for example, takes values W1 uh, to WS. This could be like hundred dollars, twenty dollars, thirty dollars, and so on, uh, with probabilities. So there are associated probabilities with this value. So W1 is a value taken with probability pi1. And WS is a value taken with probability pi s. All these are mutually exhausted events. So uh, the sum of these probabilities uh, would be equal to 1. Now we know how to calculate average of a given sequence of numbers. Now here, it's not only the events of numbers that is there, all the numbers are associated with the probability that uh, with which they occur. So in order to calculate the expected value uh, of a random variable, we will have to uh, sum, uh, over the ex uh, sum over the product of the actual value that could be taken multiplied by uh, the uh, respective probabilities. So, in a way, you can think about this as a weighted average, the weights being uh, the probabilities. So, expected value of uh, W would be a uh, sum of this. Uh, uh, so, you individually multiply the probability with the values and then sum all of them together. So this is uh, uh, this is basically the uh, the product of expected values summed over all the values, all the possible values that this particular random variable could take. Usually while calculating average, we divide this number by number of observations. Here, we divide this number by the total weight uh, that we are giving to uh, this particular, uh, for a particular value. But of course, because uh, it's the weights are probabilities, they sum to 1. And therefore, even though we write it here as just uh, sum of uh, the values associated with uh, and the probabilities associated with those values, there's still a divisor that is 1. Uh, there. So expected value, the mean of a random variable is called as an expected value because there is uncertainty involved in it and we are looking at values, possible values which have associated probabilities with it. Now, how far do these values vary? vary? Do we have a standard uh, measure of figuring out uh, the variance of a random variable? Well, one simple way of calculating variance of a random variable, or for that matter, any variable, uh, is to uh, calculate deviations from the value. So here, deviations from the expected value. But of course, that the random variable uh, could have a value which is less than the expected value, or could have a value which is more than expected value. So if you sum all, all these deviations, the sum would be, uh, mathematically, the sum uh, would be always zero. So, in order to calculate a variance, you basically square all the deviations so that you get rid of the negative values. So, variance of a random variable W is denoted as sigma square W uh, 
where sigma is calculated as deviation of every value from the mean of that particular uh, random variable, which is the expected value, and you sum the, uh, you square these deviations uh, and then uh, multiply them with the respective probabilities and sum over all the possible values. That will give you variance. Variance measures the random variables variation. It tells you how far uh, the values of the random variable could go from the mean. So it measures distance from the mean, uh, squared distance from the mean, to be precise. Standard deviation, which is an alternative measure of, vari uh, of variability of uh, a random variable, is just the square root of variance. So standard deviation is basically standardized distance from the mean in that sense. Standard deviation is also another measure of random variables variability. So let's look at how uh, a typical graph looks like. So now this here uh, are examples of symmetric distributions. Uh, normal distribution is an example of a symmetric distribution. Uh, here we have shown two distributions with the same variance. So you can look at uh, the spreads of these uh, particular distributions. They are same. But of course, they have different means. Mean is basically the line which is drawn from the, uh, uh, from the peak of the distribution to the x-axis. So these have different means but the same variance. How would two distributions with uh, same means but different variance look like? So, uh, uh, so basically their peaks will be aligned. If they have same means, then the peaks would be aligned. The only thing that would be different is uh, if the variance is uh, or uh, if the variance is larger, the distribution would be more spread out. If the variation uh, is smaller, then the distribution uh, would be less spread out, uh, and so on. Now, how are we going to use all these concepts to define preferences over risky assets? So, of course, uh, we would say uh, one of the uh, assumptions that carries forward for preferences is more is preferred to less. So, now here, there are two dimensions on which we want to define uh, more is preferred to less or less is preferred to more. So for mean return, always higher mean return is preferred. But for variation, less variation is preferred. Because less variation would signify that there is less risk. If there is less variation, then the probability that you would uh, get a certain value for the asset uh, is quite high. So let's represent uh, preferences by a utility function, which is a function of uh, mean return of the, on the asset and the standard deviation. So u uh, gets a higher number if the return goes up, u gets a lower number if the risk goes up. So the preferred direction of preferences is towards the mean return. And therefore, our indifference curves are going to look like this. So here, we are thinking of standard de deviation of return uh, as a bad. What does that mean? It means that if I have an asset whose standard deviation is high, then I would require a higher mean to compensate me for the additional risk. And therefore, the indifference curves are positively sloped. And the uh, degree of uh, or the direction of preferences is basically this way, which means that uh, any bundle lying on this indifference curve would be preferred to this because for the given standard deviation of return, you have a higher mean return on bundles on this indifference curve. And bundles on this indifference curve would have an even higher return for the given standard deviation of the return. So higher mean return is good, higher risk is bad. So this is an example of one good, bad, one good, good. And you can think about n number of examples like this. The indifference curves between these 
these two kinds of commodities will be up, always upward sloping. So we're still in the realm of micro. We're using classic microeconomic theory to specify preferences of consumers here, in this case, on risky assets. And this is what we get. Now, how do we calculate the marginal rate of substitution? Marginal rate of substitution is the slope of the indifference curve, as you must recall. Don't get bogged down by all the signs uh, that we have here. Let me quickly explain uh, what we are doing. So marginal rate of substitution is calculated by uh, basically moving from one point on an indifference curve to another point. However, you know that the property of an indifference curve is that you could be on different bundles on the same indifference curve, but all those bundles will yield to same utility. So if I move from one bundle to another, there is no change in the utility. And that's what we are basically saying here. So du, which is your, uh, if you understand delta as a sign for change, d is just a representation of that. Uh, only thing is, it is written as d uh, when the variation that you're looking at uh, or the distance that you're traveling looking at is very, very small. So d, uh, so change in utility is zero because we are staying on the same indifference curve. But what are we doing then? When we move, uh, on the indifference curve, we are uh, we are moving in uh, moving either towards more standard deviation or towards more mean. So we want to see what is the effect of on utility uh, to get higher mean. But of course, when I get higher mean, I also mean return. I also have higher risk because remember the indifference curves are positively sloped. So d mu is the change in the mean return that I'm looking at. d sigma is the change in the standard deviation that I'm looking at. And the associated multiple here tells you what is the impact of one tiny increase in mean return on the utility. So if the mean return changed by two points, then the total change in utility would be given to you by this change, which is two points, multiplied by what would be the impact on utility for every unit change in mu. The same would be here. So this basically tells you what is the total change in utility that I'm looking for when I move from one bundle to another bundle on the same indifference curve. So therefore, this is a sum, but the total should be zero because there's no change in utility, which implies that I can solve this. I can take this uh, particular term on the other side. And we know the slope of the indifference curve is basically rise over run. The rise is mean return uh, and the run is standard deviation. So the slope is gonna be delta mu by delta sigma. Because we are looking at smaller changes, we write it as d mu by d sigma. And you can solve this from this equation here, which tells you that the slope of the indifference curve is basically ratio of the marginal utility uh, impacts of uh, standard deviation and mean. So that is your mean return that we are, uh, that is the marginal rate of substitution uh, that we are looking at for this particular uh, uh, preference over the risky asset. Now, before we go on, uh, uh, please uh, solve uh, quiz one uh, so that you make sure that you are, you are familiar with all the concepts that we have talked up till now, and then go on to the second presentation.